Part of the patient care in fluoroscopy is having a good understanding of the types of contrast media used for various procedures and the possible side effects and toxic effects of contrast. Contrast is used because in radiography, we cannot see small differences in the attenuation of the tissues. Contrast, simply put, adds contrast to images and allows us to see structures not easily visible without it. Contrast can be positive, meaning it has a high atomic number and will absorb more radiation, giving it a hyperdense appearance on a radiograph. Or contrast can be negative, meaning it has a low atomic number and will absorb less radiation, giving it a hypodense appearance on a radiograph. Barium sulfate or iodinated contrasts are positive contrasts. Room air and carbon dioxide are negative contrasts. Carbon dioxide is better because it more easily absorbed through the intestinal wall, but room air is more common. The purpose of contrast is to provide differentiation between tissues. There is almost always some amount of air in the digestive tract. However, to fully differentiate between the stomach, small bowel, and large bowel, and the surrounding soft tissues, positive or negative contrast, or a combination of the two, must be used. For vascular imaging, blood vessels are not visualized unless there is an extensive calcification of the vessel. Negative contrast is never used for vascular imaging, as the air can cause an air embolism which can be fatal. Barium is never injected into blood vessels, which leaves iodinated contrast for these types of examinations. Positive contrasts can further be classified as colloidal or water-soluble. Let's look at each. Water-soluble means a substance that will dissolve into another water-based liquid and not separate. This type of contrast is iodinated, which means it contains iodine. Sensitivity to iodine must be assessed. Common brands of this type of contrast are gastrographin and gastro-U. Both work the same. If we take one of these, and mix seven milliliters into a 12 ounce glass of water and stir, we'll see that the contrast and the water become one. They form a solution with no separation of particles. A colloidal suspension is one that does not fully mix with water. Barium sulfate is an example of this. When barium is mixed with water, it will not completely dissolve. If left to sit on the counter, barium and water will separate, with barium falling to the bottom. How well barium powder mixes with water can depend on the manufacturer, how large the barium particle particles are, and the amount of barium being combined with water. Some types of barium do come pre-mixed with water. Always remember to shake the container until separation of the particles can no longer be seen. Water-soluble contrast has many uses, but it is not the preferred contrast for gastrointestinal studies. Exams of the vascular, urinary and reproductive systems will always require this type of contrast. Mylography, 
which is the study of the subarachnoid space in the spinal canal, and arthrography, which is the study of joint spaces of the skeletal system, also use water-soluble iodinated contrast. Barium cannot be substituted for water-soluble contrast. To the contrary, water-soluble contrasts can be substituted for barium. For gastrointestinal examinations, when patients present with certain conditions, water-soluble contrast is indicated any time a perforation of the viscous is suspected, when surgery is imminent or has recently occurred to any part of the digestive tract, or when patients are debilitated or have a physical condition that might make them more susceptible to a bowel obstruction. In addition, at any time that the radiologist or the ordering physician requests that type of contrast. Caution needs to be taken any time a patient is screened to check for sensitivity to iodine. As mentioned on the previous slide, colloidal barium sulfate is limited to studies of the gastrointestinal tract. Examinations done under fluoroscopy using barium sulfate include esophagrams, upper GIs, which are examination of the stomach and the duodenum, small bowel studies, and lower GIs, or barium enema studies. There are a few other specialty exams using barium. Modified barium swallow or a swallowing dysfunction test, defecography, enterocalesis, and even CT scans use colloidal suspensions. Barium sulfate is administered to patients orally, rectally, or through a tube into the stomach or duodenum. We call this type of administration of contrast enteral. Enteral means into the alimentary canal. It is the primary type of contrast for examination of the alimentary canal. Barium sulfate is never administered through an IV. We will learn more about the individual studies in a separate module in this course. When iodinated contrast is injected into the bloodstream, the possibility of an adverse response exists. Some are expected, and we refer to these as mild responses. Examples such as a warm, flushed feeling, metallic taste in the mouth, and feeling as if you have to urinate are common. Some reactions are known, but we don't necessarily expect them. A moderate reaction includes itching, hives, swelling of the mouth or tongue, and sneezing. This is a histamine reaction similar to an allergy to any medication or food. A severe reaction would also include trouble breathing, a drop in blood pressure, severe swelling of the tongue, causing an airway obstruction, and possibly even a cardiac arrest. A vasovagal reaction occurs when the contrast causes stimulation of the vagus nerve causing the patient to pass out. These responses are less common when water-soluble contrast is introduced into the joint spaces, bladder, or subarachnoid spaces, though there are other considerations such as infection, inflammation, and irritation that can be experienced. Colloidal suspensions do not cause allergic reactions. Major adverse situations would involve mechanical contributors. In most cases, 
we would expect patients to feel some amount of cramping or intestinal discomfort during examination. More serious outcomes would include the barium becoming impacted in the digestive tract, leading to obstruction, or peritonitis, which would occur if barium escaped from the digestive tract into the peritoneal cavity. Thanks for watching. To purchase the full course and earn your CE credits, click on the link in the description or head on over to our website at www.medical-professionals.com. And while you're there, check out our All Access Pass, where you can get unlimited CE credits for your state and ARRT renewal for just $49.99. We also offer a host of free resources to make it easier than ever for radiologic technologists like you to achieve excellence. Check out our free radiology CE webinars, clinical reference guides, and free CE courses on our website today. Be more than just certified. Choose medical professionals.